Dear friends, I'm Leonardo Espanhol Abraham from Brasilia and I will show you how trichoscopy could help us in daily clinical practice. This lecture is sponsored by La Roche Posay. Let's start. Here we have three women in their late 40s and all of them presenting with recession of the frontal hairline, but each one has a different diagnosis. So now we will see how trichoscopy can help us diagnose in this case. In the first case, we can see the hair loss in frontal area and no eyebrow involvement. So the major trichoscopy sign in this case is the absence of the vellus hair normally seen in this area. In addition, the trichoscopy shows perifollicular scales and some areas revealing hair casts around the shaft. These black areas point dystrophic hairs. The first one shows a pedotorty that represents a moderate inflammation. As the inflammation gets worse, we can find broken hairs and black dots. That's why these are good biopsy sites. The more frequent these findings are, more intense the inflammatory activity is. Furthermore, there are two types of white dots. The first are the pinpoint white dots, representing the eccrine ducts openings, and the other are the larger white areas reflecting the fibroctic hair follicle. Here we have another trichoscopy image from the same patient where can be seen absence of vellus hairs, scales, pilitorti, and one black dot. In summary, the absence of normal vellus hairs, perifollicular scales, and dystrophic hairs in the frontal hairline is suggestive of frontal fibrosing alopecia. In the second case, we have hair loss in the frontal area with many vellus hairs and no eyebrow involvement. From trichoscopy, we can highlight the presence of erythema, some vellus hairs, dystrophic hairs, many hair casts around the proximal hair shaft reflecting the physiopathology of this disease. Here, another trichoscopy of the same patient with no hair casts. In summary, the presence of erythema, vellus hairs, dystrophic hairs, and many hair casts placed on hairline in a patient with history of traction we can suggest the diagnosis of acute traction alopecia. I should highlight for these pictures the patient had just removed the wig. And the last but not the least, the third case, we have a hairline alopecia, mainly in temporal area, with many vellus hairs with eyebrow involvement. In trichoscopy, we notice many vellus and dystrophic hairs and even small exclamation mark hairs. Here, another trichoscopy showing many vellus hairs and black dots only. In summary, if we have numerous vellus and dystrophic hairs, even in the hairline, it can be alopecia reata, as in this case. We need to look for exclamation mark hairs as a clue. Now we have two cases of cicatricial patch alopecia. In the first case, we have erythema and discoloration on physical examination. Dry trichoscopy is very important here and presents with scales in affected area, 
brown keratotic plugs, vellus hairs in the periphery of the patch, circle hairs which are very commonly seen in this disease, scattered brown discoloration of the skin, some telangiectasias and pearly whitish areas in the center. From trichroscopy with immersion fluid, the scales disappear and we can better appreciate the telangiectasias, the brown keratot plug over the whole patch, the scattered brown discoloration of the skin and the pearly whitish areas in the center. In summary, a patchy alopecia presenting discoloration, telangiectasias, brown keratotic plugs and vellus hairs in the periphery is suggestive of a scalp discoid lupus. Now, the second case shows discrete erythema, scaling and lonely terminal hair in the center of the patch. Again, dry trichoscopy is important and it's noticed that the lonely terminal hair is in fact a pilitorti because of the intense inflammation around it. It's possible to see other dystrophic hairs as broken hairs and black dots. Furthermore, there is an intense perifollicular erythema and scales forming hair cast in some areas and the almost complete absence of vellus hairs with normal scalp skin in the center. In addition, large white areas representing the follicle scars and the pinpoint white dots are seen. In summary, a patch alopecia with decrease of vellus hairs, presence of lonely hair in the center, intense perifollicular scales and erythema with many dystrophic hairs in a normal scalp skin is suggestive of lichen plano pilaris.